Welcome everybody to today's video which is all about noise and this is something that we need to consider from time to time because in wildlife photography we do quite often end up raising the ISO. So in this video I'm going to give you six tips which are going to help you to reduce the noise without any post-processing. So it's going to depend from everybody what they think is acceptable but at some point you're probably going to find that the noise levels are just too much. Now not everybody wants to spend lots of time in front of a computer, I know I don't, uh, using software for noise reduction and things like that. Number one, and yes I know this is an obvious one, and that is to try and use a lower ISO if possible. Now when you raise the ISO, what's essentially happening is an amplification process in the camera and by making it brighter in the camera you are also introducing more noise, adding more noise to your images. Now this is going to be different from camera to camera, there's so many cameras out there. Uh, if it's an entry level, maybe a mid-range camera, you might find you start seeing un unacceptable noise, maybe at ISO 800 for example. More advanced cameras you can often shoot at ISO 3200 and way beyond that and still get pretty clean images. So a lot of the time it's going to be difficult to do this because we need to raise the ISO. We need to raise the ISO in order to get a fast enough shutter speed to get sharp images of wildlife. But what I'd say here is if you can, if you're in that situation, so for example it's just a very very bright day. Um, or perhaps the subject is very still, or perhaps both of those things, then there's probably no reason why you can't actually bring the ISO down, still keep the shutter speed relatively high, and get better quality and reduce your noise levels. Number two is avoiding underexposure. One surefire way of introducing noise into your images is by underexposing unnecessarily. Now this is something to do with noise to signal ratio. I don't claim to be an expert on this by any means. Essentially it's to do with how much light is hitting the sensor of your camera. Uh, so if you underexpose and there's less light hitting your camera, then you'll get a lower signal to noise ratio, less signal, less light, and more noise. Now the problem after this as well, is when you try to brighten it up because the image is too dark, when you try to brighten it up in post-processing it actually increases that noise level and makes it even worse. And particularly in the shadows, a lot of you have seen this, so if your image is underexposed and then you brighten it up, the noise seems to collect more in the shadow areas and when you brighten those areas up it can just look really, really bad. So I wouldn't worry too much about all the technical details, I would just keep it really simple and know that generally speaking if you underexpose you are tending to get more noise in the pictures. Now the difficulty of course with that is sometimes we want to be careful with the whites so when we're exposing for the whites we're usually going to underexpose because we don't want to blow them out so it's not always that simple. Number three is to expose to the right. Now it maybe makes sense that if it's a bad idea to underexpose it's possibly a good idea to overexpose and I think there's a little bit of truth to that uh, but first we need to mention the camera sensor which doesn't capture light in a linear way. So the sensor has less space for dark tones than it does for capturing lighter tones. Uh, so what this means is that you get more data, more information in the lighter areas on the right hand side of your histogram and this can be utilized in photography you probably hear it more in landscape photography exposed to the right but we can use it in wildlife photography at times as well. So the idea is that you're going to deliberately overexpose the image and then you're going to bring it down later in post processing to make it look more how you wanted to. So what we're basically going to do is push the entire histogram to the right by overexposing. That's going to give a higher signal to noise ratio, the signal being the light, so more light and that's going to be that's going to mean less noise. And we're going to do this by either opening the aperture using a wider aperture or slowing down the shutter speed using a longer, slower shutter speed to let in more light. You wouldn't really do this, make it brighter by using a higher ISO because um, that probably defeats the whole object of reducing the noise because the higher ISO is potentially going to have more noise. Again, we don't want to clip the highlights so if you're trying this exposing to the right technique uh, then the best advice really would be to try and overexpose but without clipping any of the highlights. Thank you. 
Number four is to try and brighten up shadow areas. So I mentioned this before that noise seems to really like to gather in the shadows in your images and I know for sure, I've seen it so many times over the years, it really, really does. Uh, so what you want to do is to try, if possible, if you can brighten up those areas when you're taking the picture as opposed to afterwards, uh, then it's going to keep the noise levels lower. Now obviously this is going to be very difficult to do with wildlife, uh, so you'd probably be looking at using filling flash would be the most the most obvious way of brightening up those shadows uh, but with insects for example that would be a bit easier you could brighten up the shadows by using uh, another light source either a reflector or maybe an LED uh, so it's just something that just lifts those shadows and indeed it can lift your overall picture as well you're doing it in camera which means you don't have to do it afterwards it's really going to help to keep your noise level down uh, noise levels down and the quality up Try and ignore the fact I've just squirted water all over myself uh, from having a drink. Uh, the next one is background noise and I think this is one that a lot of people probably don't know about and I've used it to good effects myself and that is the amount of noise in your background is largely going to depend on how the background looks. Uh, so in terms of tones, darker backgrounds do often seem to give more noise, they just seem to collect more noise and, and also I find more contrasty backgrounds. If it's sort of light, a mixture of light and shade that of, often seems to make the noise worse. Uh, the opposite of that is you if you have very light backgrounds, it often seems so much better for the noise in your images and anything that's just smoother. So those lighter, smoother backgrounds are often really good uh, for hiding noise. They're just Sometimes it just almost disappears entirely and it's surprising even at high, relatively high ISOs with those backgrounds, sometimes the noise isn't very visible at all. Uh, so obviously when you're taking wildlife pictures, your background is important to some degree. So you may want to have a specific background you might want to change, not want to change that, uh, but if you are concerned about the noise levels, then if it's possible, do consider moving position to shoot it against a lighter, if possible, smoother background to hide the noise. And number six is one that I don't hear talked about very often either, and that is the texture of the subject. This is quite interesting. Now, I notice this myself sometimes. Uh, on the few occasions where I've taken a really high ISO image and it didn't seem to look as noisy as I expected it to. So a good example here was a brown bear photographed in Slovenia uh, taking a pretty high ISO for my camera. When I looked it just didn't look uh, you know, unacceptably noisy, it kind of looks okay. And I think the reason for this is it kind of hides the noise. So it is an interesting one, uh, but I think in this situation, it's like the texture of the fur kind of blends in with the noise. And I've certainly seen it in other people's pictures as well. Uh, because it blends in a similar texture, it almost hides it. So this is obviously not something that you can do. Uh, it's just whatever you're photographing, but just be aware of this. If you're having to push the ISO really high and you're worried about the noise, uh, it might be possible that the texture of that, uh, that animal, for example, will hide the noise and make it more acceptable. Obviously in wildlife photography there's times where you just need to get the shot, you don't have time to overthink things. So you certainly don't need to use all the tips in this video or indeed any of the tips in this video. But if you find yourself in a situation where you have more time, uh, you know you're going to get a noisy image, you are concerned with it, you've got the time to do something then hopefully uh, maybe one or two of these tips will help you out. If you're interested in more tutorials, then do subscribe to the channel and check out my playlist. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.